In 633 CE, the Battle of Chains was the first strike of the early Muslims against the great Persian Empire of the Sassanids. The Arabs would conquer the entire empire within 20 years, while at the same time fighting a second front against the Romans. Not since Alexander the Great had a Persian Empire been conquered so quickly and completely. Before he died, the Prophet Muhammad had promised that the Muslims would conquer the East and the West. But before that could happen, the Arabs had to believe that they could take on the Sassanids and win. The great Persian empires had represented the height of civilization, culture, and raw military power for a thousand years. Could desert Arabs ever challenge an elite army from the most advanced and powerful empire in the world? The Battle of Chains proved it was possible. Leading the Muslims was General Khalid ibn Walid, a companion of the Prophet Muhammad who had dubbed him the Sword of Allah. Khalid is easily one of the greatest generals in history, and this battle is an example of his genius in warfare. Prior to this campaign, tribes in eastern Arabia had been launching lightning-fast raids into Persian territory. They were returning with abundant booty and spoils of war. Their leader, Muthanna, reported the weaknesses of the Persian defense to the first caliph, Abu Bakr. Khalid was in the city of Yamama in eastern Arabia, having just defeated the rebel and false prophet Musaylama the Liar. He was commanded by the caliph to take the capital city of al hira in Iraq. The goal was to liberate the Arabs of the Persian Empire and spread to them the new faith of Islam. Khalid, with only 2,000 soldiers under his command, sent the caliph Abu Bakr a letter asking for reinforcements. In response, the caliph sent one man Qaqa ibn Amr to reinforce Khalid's army. When challenged that he was only sending a single warrior, the caliph responded, quote, no army can be defeated if its ranks possess the likes of this man, unquote. Khalid, now in the city of Yamama, raised an army of volunteers and joined with the Arab tribal raiders to form the largest ever Muslim army in history up until that time. 18,000 Arab warriors would be facing the most experienced, well-equipped, and technologically advanced army in the world. Khalid sent the following message to Hormuz, the Persian governor. Quote, Submit to Islam and be safe, or agree to the payment of the poll tax, and you and your people will be under our protection. Else, you will have only yourself to blame for the consequences, for I bring the men who desire death as ardently as you desire life." End quote. Hormuz, offended by the demands of inferior Arabs, assembled an army of 20,000 elite soldiers to teach these upstart barbarians a lesson. Hormuz, knowing that Khalid was in Yamama and would approach from the south, marched his army down from Uballa, the provincial capital, to the town of Kazima and readied his army for battle. He arranged two wings of heavy cavalry on either side of a strong center of heavy infantry, surrounded by his light Arab infantry. The Persian heavy infantry in the center bound themselves into groups of up to 10 men together with chains. The name of this battle comes from the chains of the Persian center. The Arab auxiliaries mocked the Persian chains, observing that they made them sitting ducks for the enemy. The Persians retorted that the Arabs were cowards and wanted to be free to flee. The Persians wore the chains because they were extremely effective at preventing a breakthrough in their ranks. They also served as proof of their courage and willingness to die in battle and never retreat. And why would they think they would ever have to retreat against undisciplined Arabs? As Hormuz waited for the Muslim army, he sent out his scouts. However, they could find no trace of Khalid. Hormuz may have thought that the Arabs were bluffing. Unexpectedly, Persian messengers came rushing to him warning that Khalid's army was spotted heading towards Hufeira. His base Uballa was vulnerable. His lines of supply and communication were exposed. Khalid did not take the direct route as expected. Instead of approaching from the south, he marched his army up from the southwest using the Arab advantages in the desert as cover. Instead of moving in one slow column, he split his forces into three, all traveling within a day's march of each other. This would increase the speed of the army and allow them to concentrate again quickly when needed. Sun Tzu in The Art of War said, quote, quickness is the essence of war, unquote. 
Khedid's army traveled close to the desert so that they could retreat into safety if needed and the Persians would not follow. Hormuz, now outmaneuvered, made a forced 50-mile march to Hufeira. When he arrived, he immediately redeployed his army. As the army waited for the Muslims to appear and engage them in battle, they again were nowhere to be found. Scouts were sent out and hastily returned. Khalid was on the move again. This time, he was heading back to Kazina. Sun Tzu says, quote, All warfare is based on deception. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make the enemy believe we are near. End quote. Hormuz again sent his army on another 50-mile forced march back to Kazina. The general was hungry to finally meet the always slippery Arab raiders in battle and crush them decisively. This second march destroyed morale as the Arab auxiliaries began to grumble and the Persian army was growing tired as they had made three marches carrying heavy armor and weapons. Sun Tzu says, quote, if the enemy is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is temperamental, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest." End quote. As soon as Hormuz arrived, he again deployed for battle, with the center chained together. Meanwhile, Khalid's army was taking their time getting to Kazima, waiting for the Persian enemy to get there first. This is where he decided he would stand and fight. What explains Khedid's erratic behavior? Why did he march to Hufeira in the first place when he could have marched directly to Kazima? Khedid was a master strategist and was well aware of the strengths and weaknesses of the Muslims and the Persians. Sun Tzu said, quote, If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. End quote. Khalid knew that Hormuz's army had better weapons and the heavy infantry was better armored with chainmail, breastplates, metal helmets, gauntlets, and greaves. These advantages came with a cost. The Arabs, lightly armored and equipped, could travel much faster and with less exertion with their horses and camels. Khalid's goal was to manipulate Hormuz into making forced marches that would exhaust his men and give the Muslims the advantage on the battlefield. Sun Tzu says, Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. End quote. When Khedid arrived at Hufeira, he could have made directly for Uballa, but then Hormuz's army would be able to flank him and cut him off from the desert, so he knew he had to defeat them first before taking the city. As for his march from Hufeira to Kazima, he traveled leisurely through the desert but not so deep that Hormuz's scouts could not find him. He wanted to be seen, so the Persians would give chase. The other disadvantage of the Persians was their arrogance. They thought they were dealing with primitive Arab raiders and not an army hungry for conquest. If someone had told Hormuz that Khedid's mission was to conquer the great city of Hira, he would never have believed it. Sun Tzu says, when the enemy is strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them seem humble to fill them with conceit if at ease exhaust them if united separate them attack their weaknesses emerge to their surprise Khedid's trap had been set the persians were exhausted and the muslims were rested and hungry for victory they were ready to finally meet their enemy on the battlefield but little did they know that hormuz had an ace up his sleeve that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to share and subscribe so you don't miss the conclusion to the Battle of Chains in part two. See you all next time. Adam out.